Good afternoon, everyone. I am John, as in Books and Blogs with John, and we are continuing our journey through the Stone of Tears, written by Terry Goodkind, who is an amazing author and just a brilliant mind uh, when it comes to uh, medieval slash fantasy slash science fiction author. And uh, we are still in chapter one. And uh, this is probably going to be a long video. Well, sorry, long audio. Um, as I, uh, I, you guys can't see me as I am, uh, reading here in, uh, my studio, um, slash recording area. Um, so, um, hopefully you guys, uh, enjoy. And so, uh, um, oh, I forgot the window was open. Uh, hold on just a second, guys. I'm going to pause this there. There will be a 10 second pause. Okay, guys, we are back, and so uh, here we go. Uh, we are picking up, uh, this is episode six, uh, still of uh, chapter one. Um, so here we go. Uh, when we last left off, um, Jebra was explaining to Zed her vision of what she saw when she saw Richard, who, uh, if you guys haven't figured out, is the main uh, hero uh, of the Legend of the Super Series. He is also... Uh, Zed's uh, grandson, and he is the new uh, ruler of Dihara, and uh, he has a title uh, that comes with that. Uh, he is known as Lord Rahul. Um, so uh, his father was Darken Rahul, um, and Richard just kept his name as Richard Rahul. So there you go. So there's a little insight into that. So uh, let's pick up uh, uh, where we go. I saw him in an hourglass. He was on his knees in the bottom half, crying in anguish, the sand falling all around him, but not a grain touching him. The gravestones of all those he loved were in the top half, where he couldn't reach them against the fall of the sand. I saw a knife at his heart, a killing knife held in his own shaking hands. Before I could see what would happen, another vision came. They are not always in order of events, Zed. He was in a fine red coat, the one with golden buttons and a brocade trim. He was face down, a knife in his back. He was dead. But at the same time, he wasn't. His own hands reached down to roll him over. Before I saw his dead face, another vision came. It was the worst, the strongest. Tears welled up again, and she began to sob softly. Zed squeezed her shoulder to encourage her to go on. I saw his flesh burning. She wiped at the tears and rocked back and forth a little as she cried. He was screaming. I could even smell the burning skin. Then, whatever was burning him, I couldn't tell what it was. When it pulled back, he was unconscious, and there was a mark upon him. A mark burned into him. Zed worked his tongue in his mouth, trying to wet it. Could you see what the mark was? No, not what it looked like. But I knew what it was as surely as I know the sun where I see it. It was the mark of the dead, a mark of the keeper of the underworld. The keeper had marked him to be his own. Zed worked to steady his breathing, his trembling hands. Were there more visions, child? Yes, but not as strong, and I didn't understand them. They were rushed by so fast I couldn't grasp their form, only their pain. Then he was gone. While the moored Sith were turned, watching him go, I ran back to my room, locked myself in. I lay on the bed for hours, crying uncontrollably with the hurt of what I had seen. The Lady Ordeth banged at my door, wanting me, but I called to her that I was sick, and she finally went away in a huff. I cried until my insides were jelly. I saw virtue in that man, and I wept in fear of the evil I saw snatching for him. Though the visions were all different, they were the same. They all had the same feel. Danger. 
Danger presses in around that man as tightly as water presses around a fish. She regained some of her composure as Zed sat silently watching her. That is why I will not work for him. The good spirits protect me. I don't want anything to do with the danger around that man. With the underworld. Maybe you could help him with your talent. Help him avoid the danger. That is what I was hoping, anyway, Zed said in a quiet voice. Jebra dabbed her cheeks dry with the back of her sleeve. Not for all of the Duke's gold and power would I want to be in Lord Wahurul's wake. I am no coward, but I am no heroine in a song, and no fool either. I do not wish to put my guts back to... I do not wish my gut put back to have them ripped out again, and this time my soul with them. Zed quietly watched her sniffling herself back under control, putting the frightening visions away. She took a deep breath and sighed. Her blue eyes finally looked to his. Richard is my grandson, he said simply. Her eyes winced shut. Oh, good spirits, forgive me. Her, her hand covered her mouth for a long moment. Then her eyes came open, her eyebrows wrinkled together in horror. Zed, I am so sorry for telling you what I saw. Forgive me. Had I known, I never would have told you. Her hands trembled. Forgive me. Oh, please forgive me. Truth. The truth is the truth. I am not one who would shut a door in your face for seeing it, Jebra. I am a wizard. I already know the danger he is in. That is why I asked you to help. The veil to the underworld is torn. That thing that ripped you open escaped into the world of the living through the tear. If the veil tears enough, the keeper will escape. Richard has done things that the prophecies say mock him as maybe the only one to close the tear. He lifted the purse of gold and slowly sewed it in her lap, her eyes following it down. He withdrew his empty hand. Her gaze stayed on the purse as if it were a beast that might bite. Would it be very dangerous? she asked at last in a weak voice. Zed smiled when her eyes came up. No more dangerous than going for an afternoon stroll in a fortress palace. With a reflex jerk, her hand clutched her abdomen where the wound had been. Her eyes rose to look off down the wide, resplendent halls as if seeking an escape or maybe fearing an attack. Without looking to him, she spoke. My grandmother was a seer and my only guide. She told me once that visions would bring me a lifetime of hurt, and there was nothing I would ever be able to do to, to stop them. She said that if I were ever presented with an opportunity to use the visions for good, to take the chance, and it would make up for some of the burden. That was the day she put her stone in my hand. She lifted the purse and set it back in Zed's lap. I will not do it for all of the goad in Dihara, but I will do it for you. Zed smiled and patted her cheek. Thank you, child. He, he put the gold back in her lap, coins making a muffled clink. You will be needing this. You will have expenses. What is left is yours. That is the way I wish it. She nodded resignedly. What must I do? Well, first, we must both get a good night's sleep. You need to rest for a few days to regain your strength. Then you will have some traveling to do, Lady uh, Benavir. He smiled at the way of one of her eyebrows lifted. We both are very tired right now. Tomorrow after I have rested. I must be off on important business. Before I leave, I will come to you and we will talk more of this. But starting right now, I would ask you not to wear the stone where it can be seen. No good can come of declaring your talent to the eyes and the shadows. So my new employer shall use me uh, covertly too? Not the most honorable of things, she said. The ones who would recognize you now are not vying for gold, my child, Zed said. They serve the keeper. They want much more than gold. If they discover you, you will wish I had not saved you today. 
she winced before finally nodding. So she, uh, she wished she, she winced before finally nodding. Chapter two. Zed stood with the aid of a hand to his knee. He helped Jebra up. As he expected, she was unable to stand without leaning heavily on him. She apologized for the burden. He made her smile by telling her he, he would use any excuse to have his arm around the waist of a pretty maiden. People were starting to go back to their business, engaged in hushed conversation as their eyes darted about the suddenly not-so-safe palace. Those hurt had been helped away, the dead carried off. Maid servants and heavy skirts worked carefully at the task of cleaning up the blood, sloshing mops and buckets of red and water. Soldiers of the first file were spread out everywhere. Zed motioned to Commander Tremek across the hall. Anyway, I shall be glad to be away from this palace, Jebra said. I have seen horrors here that make me sweat in my sleep. As the officer started toward them, Zed asked, do you see anything of this man coming towards us? She studied him a moment as he strode towards them, checking the placement of his men. A faint aura, duty, she frowned as she stared. It has always been a burden for him. He is daring to hope that maybe he will now find pride in it. Does that help you? Zed smiled a little. Yes, it does. Any visions? No. Just the faint aura. The wizard nodded in thought, then brightened. By the way, why has a woman as lovely as you have not found herself a, a husband? She gave him a sidelong glance. Three have asked. As each one was on bended knee uh, before me, I saw a vision of them lying with another woman. Zed grinned. Did they ask you why you said no? I didn't say, say no. I only slapped them so hard it made their heads ring like a bell. <laughs> Zed laughed un until she was caught up in it. Tremac came at last to a halt uh, before them. Commander General uh, Tremac, may I introduce the Lady Buinavere? Tremac gave a sm uh, smart bow. As are you, as am I. This lady is one who is at the task of keeping harm from getting a glance at Lord Rahul. I would like to have her place under heavy guard at all times while she is in the palace. Lord Rahul needs her help, and I do not want her life risked again as it was today. While she is in the palace, she will be safe as a baby in her mother's arm. By my honor, Lord Wizard. He turned and gave a coated tap to his shoulder. A good two dozen men of the first file came at a dead run, freezing to halt at attention, not even breathing hard. This is Lady Buinevere. Every one of your lives before hers. With a sharp snap, every fist came to an armored heart as one. Two of them took Jebber's weight from Zed. She kept one hand tightly closed around the stone. The purse of gold bungled in a pocket of her long green skirt. It, it was covered most of the way down with dried blood. Zed addressed the men holding her up. She will need suitable quarters and meals brought in. Please see that she is not disturbed to anyone but me. He looked at her tired blue eyes and gently touched her arm. Rest well, child. I will visit you in the morning. Thank you, Zed, she said. As the shoulders helped her away, the wizard turned his attention to Tremac. There is a woman staying in the palace, a lady Ordith Kondith Dakovich. Lord Rahul is going to have enough trouble without her kind around. I want her out of here before the day is finished. If she refuses to leave, offer her the choice of carriage or a noose. Tremac grinned wickedly. I will see to it personally, Lord Wizard. If there are any others you know about the palace who are of her temperament, feel free to make them the same offer, Commander. New rule brings change. Zed couldn't see Auras, but he was sure that if Jebra had been standing there, she would have seen Trimax brighten. Some are uncomfortable with change, Wizard Zorander. 
the man had spoken more than his simple words. Are there any above you in command in the palace other than Lord R Rahul? Trimek clasped his hands behind his back as his eyes swept the hall. There is one named Dimian Nass, commander of the quads, who gave orders to all but darken Rahul. He is dead. Zed let out with a heavy breath at that memory. Trimek nodded with what might have been a relief. Below the palace, quartered in the chambers of the plateau, there are perhaps 30,000 men of the army. Their generals outrank me in the field, but in the palace, the word of the commander general of the first file is law. Some of them, I know, will, will welcome the change. Some will not. Richard is going to have a difficult enough time being the magic against magic, underworld magic, without troubles from steel. You have a free hand, Commander. Do as you see fit to protect him er, on the side of duty. Tremec grunted acknowledgement, then went on. The People's Palace, one roof, though it may be, is a city. Thousands live here. Merchants, supplies, trains of wagons to lone peddlers come and go to endless stream all directions except to the east, across the Azareth Plains. The roads in are the arteries that feed the heart of Dihara, the people's palace. Inside of the plateau is chambered with twice the number of rooms of the palace above ground. As with any city of this size, the motives of the multitudes coming here are beyond our ability to judge with absolute certainty. I will have the greater inner doors closed and still off the palace above ground. It is something that has not been done in a few hundred years, and it will cause worry among the people of Dihara. But I would risk the worry talk, Commander. The only way to the palace itself, if not through the inside entrances, is up the cliff road on the east side, and I will keep the bridge up. But wizard, that still leaves us with thousands in the palace proper. Any of them could have designs not to our liking. Worse, there are thousands of battle-tested soldiers in the belly of the palace, many led by men I would not want getting a glance at Lord Rahul. I have a feeling the new Lord Rahul is not the kind of uh, Rahul they are used to dealing with, and they are not going to like the change. Dihara is a vast empire, the supply routes long, Commander. Perhaps it is time some of these diversions were sent out to see the safety Oh, I'm sorry, Commander. Let me correct myself. Perhaps it's time that some of these divisions were sent out to see the safety of these routes. Especially the ones to the far south, near the wilds. I have heard rumor that there is unrest and trouble. And perhaps from the ranks of the ones I trust, the size of the first vial could be increased threefold. Zed studied Tremac's face as the man continued to scan the hall. The palace must be made as secure as possible, Commander. How you do it is up to you. I will give you a list then, Lord Wizard, in the morning of the generals to be trusted and those to be worried about. Why would I need such a list? because orders such as these must come from one with the gift. Zed shook his head, muttering, Wizards should not be, be ruling people. It is not right, Commander. It is the way in Dihara, Lord Wizard Zorander. Magic and steel. I want to protect Lord Rahul, and this is what I think needs to be done. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to uh, leave that there. Uh, we will pick up in Chapter 2, Episode 2. Um, so we finally finished Chapter 1.